Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. As usual, today's video is going to be a mix of different packages that I will be unboxing. We of course have a package from Right Stuff Anime that has my newest manga and manhwa releases. And might I say, this may be the very last Right Stuff Anime package that I will be unboxing on my channel before the merger with Crunchyroll that is happening next month. I'll definitely be sharing more about my thoughts over the situation during the unboxing portion of the video, so stay tuned. And then we have a couple of packages that I got using various proxy service. So the package on the bottom right is from Japan using Baiyi, and the two larger package on the left are from South Korea, and 99% of the merch in those two packages are from a Monha merch event called Rolf and Festa, and this was an in-person event that I had my proxy attend to help me purchase all the merch that I wanted. Anyways, this is going to be a very fun and chatty unboxing, so let's get started! So starting off with our first package, we have of course from Right Stuff Anime. I always start off my hauls opening a package from Right Stuff, but this one's a little bit more sentimental because right now it's October, so in a couple of days, Right Stuff will be merging with Crunchyroll, so they will no longer exist. But I'll talk more when I kind of show you guys the books itself. So in that case, it's probably easier for me to take all the books out and then kind of show you guys each one one by one. So I took all the books out of the package, so here's kind of an overview of what I got for this haul. And before I get into the unboxing, I wanted to talk a little bit about the recent announcement with Right Stuff Anime. If you're not interested in listening to my thoughts, I'll leave a timestamp below to when I talk about the haul itself. But bear with me if you are interested. So last year, when Crunchyroll acquired Right Stuff Anime, the caveat was that Right Stuff would still operate independently with the major change that its 18 plus content was moved to another store. However, news broke out a couple weeks ago that Right Stuff Anime will now merge with the Crunchyroll store and will cease to exist on October 10th. I knew this was going to happen eventually, it was just a matter of when and how. Honestly, I do dread the idea of shopping at Crunchyroll. I only had one experience using the CR store for pre-order and I never got the pre-order. Got a refund after many months later, but the whole ordeal just left a bad taste. So buying from Crunchyroll again, I'm not excited. But anyways, I've been collecting and buying manga at Bright Stuff Anime since 2019 and have at this point purchased hundreds of volumes during the past couple of years. And like many others, I'm not too happy with this integration as a whole, but I hope to remain optimistic at this point. Based on some recent customer questions that has been spread around to both companies, it looks like the Bright Stuff Anime team will be mainly responsible for their shipping logistics and then Crunchyroll will continue to honor the Right Stuff anime pricing and so to speak have their own holiday sale. So I'll definitely keep an eye out on this. For the rest of my open orders, I hope it does get fulfilled soon so I can have a clean slate, I guess, as soon as possible with this integration. And in terms of my next step, it really depends. I will decide either to buy from Crunchyroll store if there are positive reviews after the integration or start looking at alternatives, which I don't have a particular store in mind yet. Anyways, that's just my thoughts on the recent announcement. It's kind of all over the place, but if you made it this far, thank you for listening. But moving on to the books themselves, over here are some ongoing series I talked about on my channel before so I will be a little bit short and brief with these new volumes and then for the last couple of volumes here are some new series so I'll be more in detail provide a synopsis. Let's start with the first volume. So here we have is volume 14 of Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun so it's been a while since we had a new volume. Honestly there's not really like huge plot developments in the story, mostly because it's like a slice of life comedy series um, surrounding a group of friends. And so mainly just reading it for relaxation and funny moments. So on the cover we have is Sakura and Wakamatsu, one of my favorite duos in the series. And then in the back we also have So and So, 
and then Nozaki-kun. So I love the little heart balloons or plushies on the cover. Very cute. Oh, and then we also have a color page. Wow, that is so pretty. Like, Wakunatsu looks so good playing basketball. Ooh. And then, of course, we have very pretty Sakura as well. And then here's another color page of all the chapters. And look at this. This is so cute. Oh my god! Anyways, um, I just like reading Nozaki Kun for relaxation purposes. It's always funny. It makes my day. And whole bunch of nonsense to be honest but the characters are just so funny and the comedic moments uh, very interesting anyways so that's the new volume of nozaki kun very happy to have this can't wait for the next volume and then we have volume two of a uh, reincarnated which spells doom so I got volume one I think a couple months ago and I have not made any progress on this series whatsoever but I will try to. The reason why I picked up the story is because the artist of this series, Sora, is the mangaka of a series called Love Me Before You Die which is like an unofficial English title but I really like that story a lot and so to support the artist I got the series. So. I'll read it eventually, but I haven't read it yet. I will make it my to-do list to read this soon. But yeah, the art is just very pretty and it looks really cool, but haven't gotten a chance to read it yet. So can't say much about the story, but the cover is very pretty though. Anyways, moving on, we have the newest volume of Fly Me to the Moon. Sakasa is very, very pretty in this like robe wow it's very pretty and then it's like a very snowy theme as well but yeah i always look forward for another volume of fly me to the moon just kind of like a slice of life with supernatural elements and of course the main pairing sukasa and nasa are very adorable i love their home life it's always very funny and chaotic sometimes Okay, and the next series we have is volume four of No Longer Heroine. So one of your more problematic shoujo stories, but if you can't tell, this cover looks absolutely hilarious. Like, that's the main character. Yeah, Hattori just makes like the funniest facial expressions in the series. Like she herself is kind of unlikable and sometimes, but honestly, most of the characters in the series are pretty unlikable. They make very dumb decisions, but I guess they're in high school, so what can you do? So I'm very happy to have this next installment and cannot wait to read more of the drama. This was an older series I read so long ago, but I haven't reread it yet since I'm just waiting for it to be fully released in the English print and then I'll definitely do a reread of it again. That is volume 4 of No Longer Heroine. And moving on, we have another volume of Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible. This one is also a very nice cover of Kubo. I love her like little yukata. And then we have Shirashi. He's always so small <laughs> compared to her, but he's sitting on her little um her little knot over here, which is very cute, but Kubo looks stunning in this cover. And then we have Sarashi right here. This is another just kind of slice of life, romantic comedy, high school series. Very cute. I just love their tiny progression, but it is what it is. I've already read the series um, when it was Simopub by the Manga Plus app, but now just collecting the rest of the series in the physical print as well. So yeah, that is volume 9 of Kubo Song Will Let Me Be Invisible. So the next volume we have is volume 8 of Mariko-chan and very excited to read the story. I got into the series thanks to the anime and have been reading it ever since. I was going to do a flip through but I did take a look at this volume and it's very graphic compared to other volumes for some reason or not graphic like in a bad way but the monsters in this volume is like pretty intense so i don't know if youtube has like any censoring in terms of like graphic elements but 
I'm just gonna leave it as is, but I will definitely won't be reading this volume during the night because this is the only like horror type series in my collection. Like this is as graphic as it can go. So we'll see how it pans out, but I'm very happy to have this next volume of Mariko-chan. So next we have is a couple of different manhwas. Uh, here we have is The Abandoned Empress, volume six. And wow, the cover for this volume is stunning. Like all the other volumes, of course, but this is so beautiful. But yeah, can't wait to read all the new developments of this volume. It's going to be very interesting. And I love the coloring and the art for this series, even though it's probably not a lot of people's favorite for a particular number of reasons, but I won't reiterate them because I feel like at this point, I sound like a broken record on why people don't like the series as much as other manhwa series. The art is still beautiful and it's based on a light novel. So the manhwa is just following the story. So that is the volume six of The Abandoned Empress. And then the next series we have is volume four of The Remarried Empress. So another empress titled, but here it is. We have Rashta and Navier on the cover, opposite sides, of course, but been enjoying the development of the series on the Webtoons app because you can read that for free if you're interested in reading it digitally, if you can't wait on the physical print, but I'm collecting the physical because I do like the story a lot, so just want to support the artists in some capacity as well. I love physical prints of manhwas. They're just, the coloring and everything is just so nice to have in hand. Anyways, that is the fourth volume of The Remarried Empress. The last two volumes we have here are actually new series to my collection. So this volume here is the first volume of the series called We Can't Do Just Plain Love. So this is picked up by Tokyo Pop. So thank you Tokyo Pop for picking up one of my favorite ongoing spicy stories. I just love the plot of the story and also the art is immaculate. The story is actually a workplace setting. So it follows the female lead and the male lead here. They are co-workers. He is her supervisor but both of them have some sort of issues with themselves. So she actually has a fetish of smell. So she's attracted to certain smells and he has a sort of issue where he can't be around with women and that's because he gets aroused by them. So anyways, they kind of get together due to a particular circumstance and ends up getting entangled one night. But anyways, I am just super happy to have the series. Can't wait to read this volume again. It's been a while because the updates for the series is kind of slow, I think, in the digital translation for it. But uh, yeah. Super happy to have this first volume of We Can't Do Just Plain Love. And moving on to our very last volume, we have Stray Cat and Wolf. And this is picked up by Yen Press, but this is the first volume of the series. It's the same mangaka as Cheeky Brat. And this was a series that she started writing after the ending of Cheeky Brat. She's also working on another story that's currently ongoing. So she's working on two series at the same time. This one, I believe has a slower update, but nevertheless, I was super surprised when Yen Press did pick this up because this one actually has a very problematic age gap. Besides the art being very, very beautiful, the story follows the main protagonist and she ends up leaving her hometown um, because she wants to pursue high school in Tokyo. So Unfortunately, in her hometown, no one really likes her and she lives with her grandparents because her parents died from an accident. So that's why she's living in Tokyo by herself. And she was supposed to be living in this boarding house, but there was some situation at the boarding house. So she's basically wandering around the city of Tokyo by herself. And one day she's like super exhausted and she like passes out and she ends up at this guy's place in his apartment with his like friend. And they end up just kind of letting her stay because she has nowhere to go. <laughs> but yeah, he's like a lot older than her and she's in high school, but he's in a rock band as well. So yeah, this the story is a little problematic, but I really like the art and it's, it's very interesting. But yeah, it's definitely not for everyone, but 
nonetheless I still got the volume anyway because I am very intrigued with the story and I don't know maybe I just like problematic themes sometimes it is what it is anyways very stoked to have the series in my collection and with that that's everything that I got for this last Right Stuff haul again very sad that it's my last haul from Right Stuff anime but I'm pretty sure I'll still get more hauls from Crunchyroll because I still have a couple of pre-orders that they still need to fulfill so we'll see when that comes but with that that is everything I got from Right Stuff and let's move on to the next package. So the next few items I'm going to show you guys I have already opened the package for all of these goods um, I forgot to hit record and so that part I just don't have but the most interesting part are the merch so it's already here for you guys to see i bought all of the merch from japan using baii as my proxy service so if you guys don't know what baii they are a service online that helps you buy goods and merch from stores and sellers that don't ship internationally so uh, the main reason why i use baii was because for this merch right here this was from a cafe collaboration that happened a couple months ago and then they sold their merch online afterwards and their recommended proxy was Baii so I just thought it was convenient to use Baii to buy these goods and then I bought a couple of different items from Makari Japan as well just to make shipping worth it. Anyways getting into the item itself first we have is this one right here if you can't already tell this is Oshinoko so I've been buying tons of Oshinoko in my last recent hauls because Oshinoko the anime blew up a lot and so they have tons of merch and I really love the anime I love the series and my favorite character is Kana so I bought a couple of different items from her so this collaboration between Oshinoko and Sweets Paradise and they were one of the first collaboration that was announced when the anime aired a very special one indeed but I got a couple of Kana related items. So first we have is this little towel. And I just thought this was really adorable. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this little towel. But look at Kana. She's so pretty. And then of course, like many other merch that I have already gotten for Kana, I got this acrylic sandy as well. So for this collaboration, this was like a made theme cafe. So... This one of Kana is just so, so pretty and uh, it's a little bit small, but I think she'll fit perfectly in my display shelf. And then we have this keychain. It's like an Instagram style keychain. And then we have Kana right there, her name, and then just kind of the Instagram border. But I thought this was really cool as well. And by buying all these items, I think I hit their purchase bonus freebie. So if you spent like 2,000 yen, you get like a free postcard and there's like a whole bunch of them. But then I got this postcard, of course, of Aqua and Ruby when they were little. This is so adorable. I love freebie postcard and this one was so cute and to die for. So. Yeah, that's all the merch I got for the Oshinoko Suits Paradise collaboration. Moving on to the next items for my Baii package, I got all these other merch from Makari. So these are just used goods sold by independent sellers. And so as you can see here, I bought a Kana figure by the brand Taito. So you're wondering why did I buy two? And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure why. Um, I was looking to only buy one Kana figure of this design, but I saw that this one had two and the price for both of them was fairly inexpensive. So I was like, I don't know, just debating if I should just buy one for a more expensive per figure or buy two where it's cheaper per figure. And I think the only concern would be that shipping costs would be more expensive. But after thinking about it, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get two. And I think this figure itself is actually from a crane game. So if you're really good at crane game, you can get this for pretty cheap. But if you're not, then you can spend more. But I thought uh, about $14 per figure was not that bad. So yeah, anyways, I bought two 
and I'll show you guys the box itself. This is how she looks like. The box is actually way bigger than what I was expecting and it's actually very heavy as well. So I'm not sure how large this figure is, but I am excited to open and show you guys. So let me take the figure out and then I'll show you guys kind of like a full view of this Kana figure. All right, so here is the Kana Taito figure fully assembled. And by assemble, I literally mean just putting her on the base. That's all you have to do. Though I did have a tricky time putting her on the base because her leg and her foot pegs didn't really match up, so there was kind of some friction there. Otherwise though, no other additional assembly required, and I was actually surprised at how big this figure is because she's actually a lot bigger than my Nendoroids. In terms of the figure sculpt, I think she looks pretty solid for the cost that I paid her, which was like $14 or so. Um, her outfit, her hat details are really nice and of course like her little bow is kind of flowing out. I think the little issues I saw was mainly on the hair. It does look kind of rough, um, not very clean. There's some like rough textures, especially around the parts where her hair pieces are flying out. Overall, I really like this Kana figure. She is so adorable and worth every penny. I promise you guys, I did not just buy Oshinoko for this buy package. There is one item not Oshinoko related, so I'll show you guys that at the very end. But this is the last Oshinoko item that I bought, and it is this figure set here. So originally, I was only planning to buy Kana in this one, but the listing for all three of this was also fairly inexpensive as well. Um, all of them, I think, came out to be $20 USD, so that's like $7 per figure. And I don't know exactly how much it costs to make this, but when I saw my figure collection, it was like $20 just for one Kana figure, so I was like, I might as well get all three as well. So I will probably only keep Kana and then sell Aqua and Ruby. I will move these guys to the side. <laughs> Uh, but the main one I want to show you guys is this Kana figure here. So how she looks like is that she's on this little box. And yeah, she's just hanging off this box and I just thought this was so adorable. And then there's all three of them together as well. Each of them have like a different color. So like Ruby is pink, Aqua is blue, and then Kana is red. But anyways, that is what I got and let me take Kana out of the box and then I'll show you guys a full view of Kana as well. Alright, so here is the Kana on a box figure by Fruyu and honestly I don't really have much to say about this figure because it was very cheap to get it, like $7 or so. And for the quality of the figure, it's not that bad as well. I mean, I think the only complaint is like the hairline. It is kind of rough. There are some marks on the top of her head. Maybe that's just my figure in general and other figures of this um, doesn't have that. But besides that, her outfit's good. Her, the box is good. Her hat is like solid and clean. So yeah, she's very adorable. Her just hanging off of that box. So, so cute. So obviously her and the box are not connected in any way. You have to place her on the box, which is totally fine. That is the Akana figure and let's move on to the next item. And the very last item for my Bai haul is this beautiful illustration book here. This is an illustration book for one of my favorite shoujo series, Sans Chronicle, and this this illustration book specifically has been on my to buy list for a really long time. Um, I just haven't been able to have a chance to buy it and then one day when I was just kind of looking for different illustration books of my favorite shoujo series, I found this one on Makari for $5 which is a really great deal. So I was really stoked to finally add this to my collection because this series does have a special place in my heart. So I'm really glad to have this now. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through. Here it is. So we have a fold out poster of the entire cover. Oh, and then the back we have Anna and I forgot the main 
lead's name, the main male lead. I think his name is like Daichi or something like that. In the inside cover, we have Anne and her mom. But yeah, this is just a whole bunch of beautiful illustrations of all the characters. Yeah, the art is just so beautiful. The characters, designs, I feel like it's just like a nice nostalgic shoujo touch that you don't get as much anymore. But yeah, I saw a flip through of this um, a while back and I just knew I had to get the photo book. So uh, I'm very, very happy. Oh, there are some like kind of spoiler uh, of the illustrations. And I think there's like some comments that Mangaka wrote for some of the illustrations as well. But yeah, uh, if you haven't checked out Sonic Chronicles yet, I highly recommend. There are a couple of like trigger warnings in this series, uh, so please do uh, proceed with caution, but uh, it's a lovely story. I just adore it so much. I love all the characters and yeah, definitely my top favorite, so I'm very happy to have this illustration book. That is everything that I got from my Bai haul, and let's move on to the next package. So the next two large packages here are from South Korea. I had my proxy help me get some merch for an event called the Robin Festa, and this was a collaboration Monhua merch event that sold goods for four different Monhua titles. The two publishers that collaborated was Dion, which has the series Flirting with the Villain's Dad and the Veridescent Tiara, and the DNC Webtoon line, which included I Shall Master This Family and Why Rayliana Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion. Of the four series, I bought merch for Flirting with the Villain's Dad, the Veridescent Tiara, and I Shall Master This Family. I really like Rayliana a lot and I'm a big fan of the series, but at this time, I decided not to buy any merch for it. So let me sort all the goods to its respective series and I'll talk more about the merch in detail later on. And I also do have one more merch item that I got outside of the Roven Festa, so I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Alright, so starting off with our first series, we have all the merch that I got for I Shall Master This Family. I've talked about this series multiple times on my channel because I do collect the physical Korean print for this series, specifically the limited edition volumes. Um, it's one of my favorite ongoing manhwa series, so I do like to collect, you know, special merch for the series. And yeah, I just really love the main leads. Tia and Perez are just very well written and interesting in their own ways and the supporting cast of the series are also very strong as well. As you can see here, a lot of these merch are kind of typical things that I collect. I'm a pretty consistent person when it comes to merch buying because there's only a few different items that I usually like to collect. So let me show you guys what I got. So first we have is this postcard set. Let's try to take this out of the plastic. And here it is. So our first postcard we have is Tia and Perez. And then this is the back of the postcard. Very beautiful design. And then we have current Tia. Very cute. And then we have Perez as well. Oh, and then this is a grown version of Tia. And when they released the third season trailer picture, they actually drew an illustration of grown-up Tia and Perez. So I'm really excited to when we get to that part of the story. Been anticipating for a really long time, but they did hint the visuals of the two leads in their grown-up version in the prologue of the story as well. Oh, uh, this is so adorable. He's so tall <laughs> against her, but when they first met too, they were like pretty much the same size, but he's grown quite a lot since then. But yeah, that is all the postcard design. And then I also got some acrylic stands, so I won't be assembling them in this video just because I don't really have an idea of how to display these stands for now, but of course, I did get both of the characters to match with each other. And yeah, that is the acrylic stands as well as I got two pin badges as well. So this one is a badge for Tia. And then this one of Perez. I'm a sucker for collecting pins, so you know, 
I gotta collect them all. And then uh, I also got some photo cards because I always collect photo cards. So here we have are some regular photo cards. So let me just open this set up. Well, the packaging for this photo card set is extremely tough to open. I mean, it's well protected, but oh gosh, it was very hard to open. Anyways, so here are the photo cards. So what's special about these photo cards is they have this like very nice holographic detail and uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I think you can see a little bit of the shimmering, but this is the back of the photo card, which is very similar to the postcard backing. And then there's like the styrofoam, and then here is another design. Oh, she's so adorable. And of course we have the father, Galahan, best dad ever. And then we have a picture of both of them. And of course, Tia's awesome teacher. And then the twins, big supporter and protector of Tia as well. And then we have one of Perez by himself. Oh my god, he's so precious. And I think that is everything for this postcard set. And because it took me so long to open the packaging for the postcard set, I also kind of opened this one a little bit. So this set right here is a transparent photo card set. So kind of just a different view, but this one of Perez is very, very cool. So they're transparent, so I don't need to show you at the bag. But then here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's them, Presentia, outside, and she's handing him a bag of cookies. And of course, we have Tia and her father. Uh, I just love this duo so, so much. And then we have this one of Tia, but a nice horizontal version. And then this one of the twins as well. Oh, so cute. I love them a lot. Yeah, and so that is all of the transparent photo cards. Uh, let me move all these items to the side so I can show you guys the last item. And the last item I have here is a desk mat. And I've been meaning to buy a desk mat for a while because I've been using my current one for since like 2020. Um, and it's a pretty small desk mat, but this one is actually pretty big, so I think it'll just look better on my desk in general. But let me show you guys the illustration of the desk mat. So here it is. Yeah, it's very long, which covers a lot of surface on my desk, and the illustration is just so pretty as well. There is Perez and Tia, Castle Behind. And I just love this kind of nighttime background. It's my favorite color, which is blue. And so I really just love this overall vibe of this desk mat. Anyways, uh, that is everything that I got for I Shall Master This Family. Tons of really cool merch. I'm really excited to store these and then display all of the items that I got. And let's move on to the next series. So the next series we have here is one that is pretty familiar to my channel and that's because I talked about this series in multiple videos at this point. Um, I collect tons of merch for the series, Flooring with the Villain's Dad, so um, it's one of my favorite manhwa series of all time and I just am very flexible when it comes to buying merch for this series and whenever I hear an event that has Flooring with the Villain's Dad merch, I will do my best to get the merch. So here is kind of an overview of some of the merch that I got. I actually got some more items that are a little bit big to show so I will show you guys that in the next clip. But similar to I Shall Master This Family, we got postcards, photo card badges, stands, and some other items outside of that as well. So let me show you guys some of the new items that I got. So first we have are these adorable pen set. These are some gel pens. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the tip size. Oh, they're 0.4, so kind of thin. But I got one, of course, 
Uridian, and then we also have Uranica as well. I just thought this was so cute, so I couldn't pass up on not buying the pens. And then I got some collect books as well. So if you guys don't know what collect books are, they're basically just another way to store your photo cards. So I do have a couple of photo cards here. So there's two versions. There's this really nice pink background, and then it's a pretty simple back cover. And then there's also this blue design as well. And then on the back, it has Uridian and Yernika. Those are the two collect books, and I can't wait to store my photo cards uh, in these little uh, collect books here. And now for the rest of the items are consistent to um, what I got for the previous series. So let me just take out the postcard set. First we have is the beautiful Yernika my favorite pink hair lady and then this is the back of the design which is very plain <laughs> and then we have Iridian my very handsome silver hair male lead and then we have Solea the villain of the story and then of course we have our two leads one of my favorite affection moments uh, and this is them too. This is the time skip era. Another time skip. So this one, this dog here, Wolf. This is Rollis, the god of the series. He's also Yernika's little companion. And yeah, that is all the postcard illustrations. And then we also have the two badges. So we have one right here. This is Rollis, the god that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this badge was actually like pretty expensive because there's like this little extension here I can't it's like a little cross I think but yeah it was like 2001 more expensive <laughs> but I don't know it's still very cute though and then the next badge or pin we have is this one of the cross that I mentioned earlier but a bigger size so yeah those are the two enamel pins that I got I don't know why I keep calling them badges and of course, always got to get my acrylic stands. Oops. So first we have is this really pretty Yernika design. So this one comes with a lot more parts compared to the I Shall Match of this family. But oh, I just thought this is so cute. It's almost like a wedding theme. Kind of a spoiler, but not really. And then we also have Iridian. So the story is actually completed in both the English and Korean translations. But we also have a couple of side chapters, side story chapters. So I don't know when they'll be out, but I'm looking forward to that as well. So those are the acrylic stands. And then we have the photo cards. So I already pre-opened the photo cards because it was so tough to open the package when I was opening the I Shall Master This Family one. So pre-opened these ones and still they're kind of tough to take out. So, okay. So these are the holographic photo cards. So photo cards for flirting with the villain status, nothing new. I've opened tons of them since I do collect the Korean limited edition volumes for this series. But they're very pretty. I love the holographic detail. And this is Yernika with her niece. I'm kind of forgetting her name, but she's really cute and adorable. And then we have Soleya, very pretty, but evil. <laughs> and then Yernika as well, it's one of my favorite outfits from her. And then Uridian solo shot. And then, ugh, oh, them, I'm so jealous. They're so adorable. And then another solo shot of Uridian as well. Then, last but not least, we have the other set here. So this one is the transparent photo card version. So this one, very cute. And then, oh, oh, upside down, we have this one of Yernika in this nighttime. This is actually the same kind of scene. They're like both looking at each other. Uh, one of my favorite moments in the series as well. And this one, the iconic visual of the series. And then this one is when they're finally reunited. 
and that first night they're back together. Ugh. I just, I love the series. Okay, so let me move all these other items to the side and then show you guys the, of course, another desk mat. Right here it is. Um, this is actually a very old illustration or art style of flirting with the villain's dad. Um, it looks a little bit different now because I think in the last season, the artist kind of changed a little bit the style, but I'm glad we have this illustration because this is my favorite like art style um, of the series, but this is a very nice contrast to the nighttime for I Shall Master This Family. This is like a nice daytime theme, so I'll definitely be using this maybe more in the spring or summer. So I guess for now, since we're heading into fall, I'll be using the I Shall Master This Family desk mat for the fall and winter season and then I'll be changing it to this one. Plus these dust mat have a really interesting smell so I'm gonna have to air it out because it's kind of smelly right now. So that is kind of the first set of merch that I got for I Shall Masters Family and then I'll show you guys the last batch of items that I got. And the last couple items I got for Flooring with the Villain's Dad are these cute pillows ah i'm so happy to have them when i saw these i just knew i i had to get them i am a sucker for collecting like plushies and pillows so when i saw these pillows i had to get them and i not only bought two pillows like come on now like why would i just buy two i actually bought four because the other two pillows have a different design or outfits so I bought all of them. So this one right here, we have Euridian and Yernika wearing school uniforms, which is, you know, not a common look for them because they're in like a fantasy setting um, for the story. So this one is like a totally new look, but oh, oh my God, imagine a modern day Yernika and Euridian story. Sign me up for that, please. But yeah, I just love it. There's like a little cat. Uh, in Euridian's pillow and then there's I think Rawless for Yurinika's pillow and then on the back are just some simple like pink and blue color kind of like cotton candy anyways those are the first two pillow designs and then the next two pillow design of course has to be their regular outfits in the series as well so we have Euridian here and Yurinika and oh, my gosh the Yurinika design for this pillow is absolutely stunning she looks so good the detail i just love these chibi forms too and of course the back is the same colors but uh i'm just so happy to have these pillows they're so soft and yeah the pillows are absolutely adorable that is everything that i got for flooring with the villain's dad and let's move on to the next series so the last series I have merged for at the Rofe and Festa is actually a series I haven't talked about on my channel before. The story is called Very Distant Tiara and since I haven't talked about the series, I'll just try to give a brief synopsis. So basically the story starts um, with a girl. She is a grad student and one day she dies in an accident and then she finds out that she's transported to a novel that she's written when she was younger. Unfortunately, the character that she becomes in the novel is actually a character that's going to be killed off and is actually a villain to the main male lead. So in order to prevent herself from being killed off two times, um, as the, I guess, author of the novel she's written, she's trying to kind of, you know, fix the circumstances that she's in and try to avoid her death lag as well as to help out the main male lead who's actually her stepbrother so i really love this story a lot lan and yusuf the main characters of the story are just wonderful characters i just love the storyline this is a step sibling kind of trope so i know people aren't very comfortable with this type of storyline so i just wanted to preface out there but i just think the storytelling of this series is so good it's based on a novel that i've read a long time ago as well. I love the manhwa art of the story and of course when you get manhwa adaptations you get more merch opportunities so that's why I am always happy uh, when my favorite novels gets adapted to a manhwa because then I can collect more merch for the series but it really depends too if the art is good or not but most of the time the art is good so I have no troubles collecting merch but yeah I know some series are hit or miss but anyways 
Uh, I'll show you guys the merch here. It's pretty similar to the other two that I've showed you guys earlier. But first we have is the postcard set. Here we have the visual of the two main characters. We have Lan and then Yusuf. So like I mentioned, they are step siblings, but to them, like in consideration, they don't view each other as like family. They're very distant um, and they actually never spend that much time together as well. Um, Yusuf actually gets transferred to like an academy for most of their childhood. And then this is the back of the card. So similar to Flirting with the villain's dad, it's pretty simple postcard backing. And then this is them as well. And I just love the outfits of the story. It's very beautiful and detailed. And Lon looks really pretty in the story. And then this is Yusuf. So I guess kind of a spoiler, but Lon gives him the sword. And he's like very happy because no one usually remembers his birthday. So he was very happy when she gave him the sword. And this is my beautiful Lon. Oh, she's stunning. Another solo pick of Lon as well. But yeah, I love the slow burn of this story. It's just so good. And then yeah, that is all of the postcard illustration. And then let me just show you guys the photo cards. So I already pre-opened all of these because for ease. <laughs> Okay, so first we have is this transparent photo card of Yusuf, and look what we have here. And then, oh, it's upside down, but yeah. This is them two together, and then, oh, another horizontal pick. Anyways, these are the holographic photo cards. So yeah, we have here is like a very similar illustration to the postcard design. And then here we have a solo pick of Eustif. And then this is Lon as well. I love this hairstyle of her. It's very pretty. When her like bangs are sweet on the side. And of course, this one, he just gives her like a little kiss on the cheek. She's very surprised this one as well and then of course another pick of Lan them two together so that's all the photo cards and of course we have the enamel pins so this one is this one right here this is one of the, the minerals that they find in the world that they live in and then this one is another enamel pin I don't really remember what this design is for but very pretty and of course we also got two collect books so to design gonna put the photo cards in these little booklets here collect books and then these are the back so I actually like these ones a lot because there's actually illustrations of the two main leads on the back which is very nice so it's not just like any simple sceneries um so yeah i'm a big fan of these two collect books but yeah i do hope that there's going to be more merch for this series in the future the manhua itself actually doesn't have a physical print yet so i would talk more about this series if it does get a physical print it has two seasons so far so maybe i'll have one eventually but if it does i'll definitely be collecting it but for now that is everything that i got for the Rofan Festa. So the last series I got merch for um, are these two plushies here. Ugh, I'm a sucker for plushies. I see a plushie of my favorite couple from a favorite manhwa series, I'm gonna get it. But these two characters here, this is Inez, the female character, and Carcel, the male character. They are from a manhwa series called The Broken Ring. This marriage will fail anyways. And I actually haven't talked about this series on my channel so i'll give you guys a brief synopsis so the story begins with this female character inez she attends a party one day and at the party she points to the male lead carcel and says that he's handsome she's going to marry him so they actually become engaged after this event and carcel really doesn't know why he's roped into this engagement he doesn't even know inez but anyways, for the next couple of years, he kind of establishes this like playboy reputation and 
kind of just gets into different flings. But the thing is, Inez does not really care that Carcel is doing all those things behind her back. She's hoping he continues that type of lifestyle. And the twist of the story is that this is not Inez's first life. This is actually her third life. In this third life that she is living right now, she just wants to prevent kind of like her death flag, the tragedies that befall her, so that she can just live peacefully in this third life. Their engagement period is coming to an end and they're about to get married. And Carcel is kind of questioning why Inez is so relaxed with his different lifestyle. And he's kind of at this point where he's kind of more interested in her and just trying to figure out like what she's up to. They do get married eventually in the beginning of the story and they get to know each other a little bit more. But there's just a lot of different twists and lots of hidden revelations um, that comes about. So I just adore this series a lot. It has, you know, tons of angst in it and lots of misunderstandings. I'm currently reading the novel for this series as well as reading the manhwa. They're both available on Tappy Tune if you're interested in checking out both versions. The novel is just so good and i've been really enjoying it but i also love the manhwa as well because one manhwa adaptations you get merged so of course that's why we have these little two today when i saw the pre-orders for these two little plushies i just knew i had to get it so i asked my proxy to get it uh, but before i actually opened the plushie itself i actually got a little bonus for pre-ordering so i won't take this out of the packaging but uh you get these photo booth strips of the two plushies out and about in different locations so they're kind of like on a date which is so cute and you can't really see well but they're at Universal Studios here wearing different outfits in each of the different areas there's them in pajamas them out and about aquarium ferris wheel oh so adorable but yeah I think this is like a little postcard mail letter set and of course we have this little postcard advertisement of the store that sold it. So that is that, but let's get into opening the little plushies. And from the looks of it, it looks like the plushies are actually already wearing clothes, which is nice because I don't like to dress them up. But this is kind of the box design, which is very, very cool. It's like a little palace setting and there are 20 centimeters too. And I believe you can still purchase this, but they don't ship um, this internationally. So you probably need to get a proxy or purchase a Korean site that will help secure these goods. Anyways, so we have here is Inez. Very cute. I love the outfit that she's wearing. Oh, she's so, so cute. Uh Inez is also in the story kind of this like unapproachable stoic girl so she also doesn't have like the best reputation in the story but as someone who has lived in two previous lives that's gone through so much um can definitely tell why she's the way she is but I love the little braid details of her hair and her dress is very glittery I love the tooling detail so that's Inez let's open Carcel now and the box design is the same. This is like my second um, manhwa plush pairings and I hope my other favorite series gets one too because I just love collecting these type of little dolls. Okay, so here is Carcel, our very handsome male lead. He goes through a lot of great character development by the way, so don't think of him as like a playboy because that's the beginning and of course Inez understands and she doesn't really care but he changes for the better so I love the little design that he had he's so cute I love the outfit too and then this is the back oh and then they have these little this is like their younger version tags oh it's so cute and then this is Inez too look at her this is the face of the girl that proposed to <laughs> little Carcel when she's six. This is the two plushies, Inez and Carcel from the series Broken Ring. So that's everything that I got from Korea and this actually concludes my haul as well. So let's move on to the outro.
Here is an overview of some of the items I unboxed in today's video. I enjoy getting new merch, books, and goods from my favorite series and adding them to my ever-growing collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye!